I want to expand that a tiny bit and I want to see if we can add in more of an evolutionary connection because I know you can also hypnotize animals. So so I say that again? You can also hypnotize animals. Of course, yes. Chickens famously. And um, yeah, absolutely. And and sharks and alligators too. I haven't tried it myself. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So it seems like it has a really important biological role. Yeah. Okay, well, let okay. So let me explain something crazy, if you don't mind. Like, I was surprised as much as anybody else. I did this TEDx, and now it's at 11 million views. But I think this is why. Let me explain what, why I think it's not just my charisma. I'm, I'm joking. Um, uh, that it's the beard. It's the beard. It's the hair. Um, it's because. For centuries, there's been this chase on what is the model to explain hypnosis, and it it would go like this. You know, it would go like um. So for many, for a hundred years, I thought eye fixation, staring at stuff. But you know, it's true. Staring at stuff does kind of put you into trance. At one point, they thought boring people because you can bore people into trance. Uh, that's back to the church uh, angle. Um, you, that's one way to put people in the trance. Uh, then um, uh, Mesmer thought animal magnetism. It was it was something closer to the concept of qi and Chinese uh, traditional Chinese medicine. So there's all these, there's all these competing models, and none of and they all explain like a, like a part. They may, eye fixation makes sense. It just doesn't explain the whole thing. It doesn't explain sort of the wonder of it too. So what I did, and it, and I, I should explain. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't. Um, it's not like I figured it all out all by myself, but I put together things that came from different places in one TEDx. And I think it blew it sort of blew people's minds. And this let me explain what it is. It's it's the sudden connection of dreaming, so the dream state and hypnosis. And the reason this is is because when you put people into deep trance, their eyes roll up and their eyes flicker almost exactly in the same way as somebody who's in REM state sleep. And when you understand that, you understand sort of everything. So let me give you like a weird example. When you go to a stage hypnosis show, like there's this weird aspect of it is that, you know, people snap their fingers, they pull someone's arm and the person flops over like this. Well, why are they flopping over like that? Well, the explanation is that if hypnosis is like REM state dreaming and and hypnotherapy is essentially a managed waking dream state that can be modified then when people dream and 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 there's no appropriate term for this that i know of anyways they experience something is sometimes called sleep paralysis because their body is paralyzed and the explanation for that is that if your body was not paralyzed while you had one of the many dream typical dreams like running jumping attacking or whatever you would run out of bed and hit the wall or you would attack the person that you're sleeping with or whatever. So so you're in a paralyzed state. So in a stage hypnosis show, you're seeing sleep paralysis. You're seeing the person, because if you ask those people, we can demonstrate this. If you ask those people who are like this and appear to be deeply asleep, can they hear you? They will go, yeah, I can hear everything. They are alert. So that's what I, in this TEDx, that's what I, suggested is that that dreaming and hypnosis are linked that's not in the scientific literature in fact i had a bunch of like psychotherapists and psychologists and i did that tedx like took the trouble to call me up and tell me that i was wrong mm. and they said that pet scans or or mris do not show that REM state hypnosis and REM state dreaming are the same thing which is not what i said i didn't say they are the same thing i think they we know that we borrow and modify from different aspects of behavior. They're not exactly the same. But if you use the metaphor that hypnosis is a kind of waking dream that can be managed, everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. I would also wonder if lucid dreaming wouldn't have different aspects of the brain activated than regular dreaming. Because hypnosis seems more like lucid dreaming because there's a control module that's in place that isn't there during regular dreaming. Yeah. Well, one of the weird things, and not people are different, but one of the weird things that people report, and this is an example of like phenomena that nobody investigates. I don't know why, but 
is that they, when they start to lucid dream, they might notice this twitching behavior. That's how they know they're going in. Or there's a second factor. They notice an intensification of imagery. Uh, that's a sign that they're going into a lucid dream. Well, when people go into trance, uh, same thing, they start to twitch. They also see images more vividly. And um, th th it's called idiomotor signals. That's the term for it. But nobody knows... Like and if you ask like hypnotists or you ask scientists like what's going on why as I see these people going to trance they do this weird twitching thing you don't need to go into trance you can just be sleepy if you're just sleepy you tend to twitch a bit what I think we are seeing I, I sometimes always go for the most obvious answer is the interface between here's me alert and awake here's me asleep and in trance and then in between the sleep paralysis. And I'm kind of like on the switch. And so it's like I'm jerking around. That's my explanation, but there is no there is no formal scientific explanation for it. Well, it's really interesting because the mainstream explanation for REM sleep functionally is that it's important in consolidation of memories. Yeah. And, you know, if you're talking about essentially manipulating memories when it comes to dealing with trauma and deprioritizing them and so forth, it makes sense that there's a shared circuit in that in that case. Well, well, you hit the nail on the head. That's why the protocol that protocol we described works is because what you're doing like this is a well known principle in neuroscience that people when people re remember things it has to be re consolidated. So what we do and what we did in that protocol is we removed all the color, made the tag black and white. Now it gets reconsolidated as an ineffectual, unimportant tag. Mm. Therefore. It's no longer triggerable. Usually. It's interesting because people do tend to, like, they test people's memories and they find that actually their memory is of the last time they had the memory. And you have this game of telephone, essentially, where maybe after 15 years, what you think is your memory of the event is just your, you know, memory of a memory really of a memory. distorted, yeah, long winding road of memories consolidated into one memory, which isn't even close to accurate anymore. 